You're listening to Kayo Conversations, a podcast about anything and everything that matters to Kayo Megas. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our podcast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Leslie Harrington, CEO for Kayomega, and today we are thrilled to welcome Olympic athlete and sister, Laura Bennett, initiate of the EOTA Alpha Chapter at SMU. In high school, Laura quickly emerged as a standout swimmer and track runner, which led her to a walk-on scholarship at SMU, where she clinched an NCAA championship title. And her steadfast commitment and discipline paved the way for her remarkable success on the Olympic stage. She has represented the United States at multiple Olympics with a notable fourth place finish in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. She has also proven her athletic prowess at 14 world championships and has won four USA national titles alongside a long, long list of other titles, domestic and international. In the year 2000, Laura's path intersected with a man by the name of Greg Bennett, a fellow Olympic athlete from Sydney, Australia. The two are now married with two children and living in South Florida. Laura spends her time today promoting health and wellness to other mothers and friends, encouraging each of them to live their lives with intent and to optimize their potential, whatever that potential may be. So Sister Laura, welcome to Kyle Conversations. Thank you for taking the time to join the chat today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really nice to have you guys reach out and and welcome me on your podcast. So thank you. Likewise. And I know that your story really began when you were just a preteen. You were only 10 years old when you started training for triathlons and only 12 when you started your career in swimming. So I want to know who introduced you to sports and how did you stay so focused with all the preteen distractions? Yeah, sure. Okay. So my dad was always a runner. And so he would do fun runs on the weekends with my brothers who are basically five and six years older than I am. And so I think I was just always um, interested in sport and, you know, very not, you know, athletic or whatever. That was probably where my talent lied as, as a young kid and my desire to, to just be outside and, and playing games. So that led me into doing some running races with my dad. And then um, my next door neighbor, um, most of the neighbors actually I had were boys and they were always so much more fun because they would be outside and playing sport and doing things. And so it just ended up that way. And my next door neighbor was um, a swimmer and his mom, you know, said, you know, you should come out for the swim team. And so I was like, okay. I mean, I'd, I think I had learned how to swim, but I wasn't on, you know, swim team or anything. And my brother's, um, kind of brought triathlon to my dad who had never swum until the age of 40. He was always a runner and he, he fell in love with it right away. So I think that kind of brought me into the sport as well. You know, my brothers were at university when they did find it, I'm pretty sure it was about that time. And, and so it kind of got me involved, um, when my dad was going to the local races and things. And then again, my next door neighbor, there was an Iron Kids series that went on when we were really young, like between that 10 years old and eight to 12. Um, Basically there was, I mean, it was probably all ages, but that's when we kind of started in my little group of swimmers and friends and everything. And so we, we did a few races of those and then also just the local races with my dad. And so basically that, I mean, I did all sports growing up and definitely you know, backyard football with the boys until they got too big. That is what I wanted to ask you about, because it sounds like almost, you know, sports for you was a family affair. I'm not sure you had another choice. I mean, you had to do some kind of sport with all those boys in your family. Um, And it looks like you found another family at SMU and in Kayamega. And it sounds like swimming found you. I mean, it looks like you almost had to choose swimming. And I'm so glad you said yes to Kayamega. Did how did Kai Omega show you flexibility when it came to your training schedule? It had to be just really, really intense. Yeah. I mean, they were very supportive. I don't ever remember thinking, boy, the, the sorority is holding me back from what I need to get done here. Mm. So I, I honestly, when I was, you know, um, thinking back about my experiences there, I, yeah, I don't, I only remember positive and enjoyable and flexible, even, you know, with the rush part of it, yeah. you know, they were really, really supportive and, and going, okay, we know what you need, 
you know, we know what you got going on and we'd love to have you be a part of us, but you know, here's the certain things you might need to get done to get in here. And so, yeah. And so that's how it worked out great. Yeah. Well, if Yoda Alpha had a lot of athletes, it sounds like they were already very flexible with training schedules. I, you probably taught Chi Omega more than we taught you, but can you think of any skills that you learned from your Chi Omega experience that maybe served you well in your athletic performance or in your life today? Well, I think just being around the camaraderie and, you know, the organizing of certain events and being a part of, you know, how you would structure everything and, and, you know, having the vision of, okay, this is what we want to put together, building it together and, and executing it. And I think that's, that's one of the, the bigger parts of um, what I probably took from, from being there as, as much as just the whole experience and the, the beautiful girls that I got to, to be, you know, create friendships with and, and everything. So. I love that. We can organize an event. That is for sure. Yeah, definitely. It comes with the letters. Now, yes. after your athletic success in college, you reached, you know, really the pinnacle of athletic achievement, uh, becoming an Olympic, Olympic athletes. That is something that most of us will never, ever, ever achieve. So walk us through like everything we want to know, you know, what was your headspace like? When did it feel real? And when did it feel surreal? And how did you combat the nerves? Yeah. So then we did opening ceremonies and I thought that was the most amazing experience. Like we, you walk in as a team and then they announce you and you kind of cross the threshold and the crowd erupts. And it's just like, just the energy in there is so amazing. And I think that's probably one of my most memorable pieces of the games. And, and then the race, the, with Beijing, I got fourth and that's tough because that's a heavy metal to put around your neck. <laughs> but I went for I went for the win and basically ended up fourth. I think if I had played a conservative game, I think on the day, if I played a conservative game, the bronze was an option. Yeah. But yeah. The gold was a pretty solid gold for the girl that was dominating at the time. And um, the other girl was pretty solid, too. So. The third was definitely up for grabs, but we, we still went for it. And um, well, I want to talk yeah. about that a little bit because, sure, you know, I feel like it's hard for me to, you know, feel bad at all for a bronze medal. But um, you probably do feel after you've invested so much time, so much nutrition, so much training in each of these goals, when you don't make the Olympic team or when you get a medal that you were not hoping for. Um, how do you process that loss or disappointment? Or do you already know like, hey, I'm one of the best in the world anyway. This is just a Wednesday for me. You, I think you just, I mean, for one, you always appreciate a win or a success of any sort. Because yeah. <laughs> you never know when the next injury is or, you know, you can train for six months and get injured at the end of your strength phase and your season's over. I mean, it's brutal. And then, you know, you've, you've spent all the money for the training camps and being away. And, you know, there's, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of like, not, this is kind of the stressful side of it is trying to stay, push the envelope, but stay um, injury free. And that, you know, I think Greg and I probably dug a little too deep sometimes and not enough. I mean, we were pretty good about recovery and nutrition and things like that, but I mean, you can always do better. That's the mentality, right? Always. <laughs> so, yes. So, yeah. So I think, you know, getting, I think, I think in 04, you know, kind of getting that slap in the face where, you know, can be number two in the world and third at worlds. And in the same year, you still don't make the Olympic team. That was 04. We, you know, that was, I can't remember when worlds was that year. I think it was in June and, you know, Olympics was in August or whatever. Um, and you're still not good enough to make the team. I mean, it, it, it kind of gives you a pretty good shake and wake up. Like you're going to just going to have to fight and deal with whatever you're going to get, you know, and you just keep fighting and fighting. And, and I think, I think that's what it is. It's about loving the challenge of kind of maximizing yourself and seeing what you can do. You know, I think maybe just it's within you in the sense, like, you know, older brothers telling you can't do it when you're like, well, I'm going to try to do it. <laughs> You know, I feel like I want to beating you is the you know biggest motivation and inspiration you could probably have. You're so competitive. Yeah, someone be yeah, exactly, exactly. That's you're like, hang on, what could I have done better there? I'm gonna get them next time, kind of thing, right? That's I know, right. but that, that's it. Like, I think, um, even you know, 
Greg and I trained a lot together, but we tried never to compete against each other. Yeah. But there have been times like in the pool, I can, I can, I can give him a little bit of a run for his money. Right. And so if we had him in the pool, as opposed to out in the open water, he would crush me out there. But because of the flip turns and everything, he wasn't as much of a pool swimmer. So I would be, so if I could, cause of swimming in college, I had really good control of my stroke and, you know, and I could control my pace mm -hmm. and, and all of that. And so there'd be often times that we end up being next to each other and I would just squeeze him as much as I could, you know, <laughs> if I felt like he was coming a little too close, I'd lift, go a little harder, you know, things like that. But well, so, yes, I do think we love the competition. Uh, well, take that, Greg. I mean, I do want to talk about him just a little bit, even though you're our sure. sister. Um, you're, no, no. You're 24. Your marriage, I think, is metal worthy in and of itself. Uh, but I'm curious, since he's also a former Olympic athlete, how do you guys work together now when you're so competitive and high performers? Do you, does it clash or complement? Well, I think we've always worked well together. And, you know, we just take the things that we're good at. And the other one, fortunately, is good at the other things that the other one doesn't want to do. But since we stopped racing, um, because we have we were so much later, like, you know, being um, together for so long and our and our age or whatever, we we kind of <laughs> no. He, he loves to tell this story. So we were kind of we, we were kind of retired, but we were doing more um, just we'd go mountain biking in the afternoon. This is before kids. Yeah. And then come back. And we we lived in Boulder. And we, we our house at the time was in an open space. Mm. So we could sit on the deck and it was beautiful. And we'd be having like every now and again, having beer and charcuterie. Mm. And one of the times I was like, there's got to be more to life than this. And he's you like, done. you were not done. <laughs> oh, he was furious. He's like, so heads kids. And so every time the kids are acting up, he's like, really more to life. <laughs> really? Than that. You had to have this. <laughs> <laughs> you did this to us. <laughs> I, I feel like speaking of perspective, I was on your website, just, you know, stalking a little bit before our talk. And I love this quote that you have. Uh, on there. It says, we don't want to survive. We want you to thrive. We want you to optimize your life. So tell us what that means exactly for the average Joe and Joe Bell. Absolutely. I think honestly, just living with intent. Hmm. Like, I feel like we've always done that. And I definitely, you know, felt like I did even as a youngster kind of going, yeah, I'm going to swimming to get better to, yeah. you know, not just to go to swimming because my parents told me to, no, I want to become better and I want to be maximizing myself. So I think, you know, nowadays, just if anybody's ever kind of feeling, you know, waffling on what they want to be doing and that kind of thing, well, we always, I mean, even, even Greg was saying the other day, we talked to all these parents, you know, with their kids and they got them in every single after, after school sport and all. And he's like, why? To what end? Like, what are you guys doing? Like, like to what is your, what's your intent with all of this? And it, I mean, I think to some degree exposure is one, but some of the kids, I mean, they're, we just do free play after school, Yeah. you know? I mean, fortunately, you know, I've got the two, that was our goal to have them close so they could be buddies and so that they could play together. And then we just are with them all the time and, you know, they're playing, Yeah. but, um, but a lot of people, of course, would have one child or, or the kids are so separated that they're, they don't really play because it's three or four years apart and that kind of thing. But ideally, you know, I think we think of it as like um, just understanding why you're doing what you're doing and, and taking a step back and thinking about it. Cause we often talk about um, you know, the girls today and what, you know, can you have it all? Like, cause I feel like a lot of girls in that 30, I'm, I'm in the 30 year old group. I'm not 30. <laughs> Yet I'm in that group because uh -huh. I waited so long to have kids. Sure, yeah. So, you know, the, all the 36s and all of that, I'm I'm a great deal older, right? And so basically, um, they feel conflicted because they basically are, they love their job, but they don't want to miss having kids. But then they feel like they don't want to leave their job, but they don't feel like they can stay with the, you know, they feel like they have to still be in work. And I, I just feel like it's such a short period of time in your life. Like it really is five years. For those of us that are not natural athletes and, and mm -hmm. those of us that might be in our selfish focus on me time, what uh, fundamental ideas or takeaways do you have that anyone can improve their level of focus and success for whatever their goals are? 
Well, I think just the consistency, like, first of all, knowing what, what, what's your goal? Like if it's, I want to run a 5k, you know, in a, in three months, or if I just want to be healthier, you know, and just be, con I think the consistency in, in all of that and trying to don't, even if it's, even if there is no goal, having a plan of kind of going, okay, well, I'm going to go to the gym every day, but you know, plan it out for a week. And so you feel like, you feel like you're on a schedule to, to, for improvement. And then you can see the gains that, that you, you know, might be after in the sense of if it's weight loss or if it's just feeling good every day, honestly, or detoxing your body from all the options that we have nowadays, <laughs> you know, um, I think those are the, the biggest things, the consistency and getting, you know, the good sleep at night. Mm. For me, it's like good sleep at night, nutrition and hydration and, you know, remembering, that it's not just water, you know, like the Celtic sea salt is the latest thing, you know, to stay hydrated with the minerals, you know, there's always something that's what the Greg's always like telling me that the nutrition is like, oh, it's a bunch of garbage nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just always something new. Like there's no consistency. And I'm like, I know everybody's trying to sell something, right. But yeah, I think just having that consistency and, and actually finding people to do it with accountability mm -hmm. buddies, you know, I think, um, I, my, I have a younger sister who's not into working out at all, but she does, but she does it with a friend. And so it's, it's social. She's super social, you know? Yeah. So that's all of a sudden she gets a workout too, you know? Ah. So I think it's finding, finding what it is it takes for you to get that, you know, get you out the door and keep you that, keep that consistency in order for you to, um, to keep going. Well, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing, get a goal, make yeah. a plan, consistency and bring a friend. Yeah. And bring it, that sounds, I think you do that and what's, yeah, you'll meet that goal. It's the Olympics. Yeah. I mean, after. And then it's the Olympics, exactly. Obviously. And then, and then like 25, 30 years of training. Yeah. Within I mean, 10. You know, side notes. Uh, oh, no. Well, Sister Laura, I am so happy to be able to break down your Olympic strategy into four key points. That was very easy. Yeah. Thank you for You're amazing. Yeah, um, you're amazing. Thank you for the time you spent today sharing your experiences with us. I want to know, are there any other Olympic worthy pieces of advice you'd like to share with our listeners today? Anything we missed? I don't know. I think, I think the big one is, yeah, probably just living your life with intent. I think you do that and everything else kind of falls in place. I believe yeah. that. There you have <laughs> it. All the Kyle Conversations listeners live with intent. And thank That's you, it. everyone. And thank you, Laura, thank uh, you, Leslie. for listening and for tuning in to Kyle Conversations today. If you know someone impressive, just like Sister Laura here, uh, Kaya Mega or not, that you'd like to see on the next episode or our broadcast, please email us at kayamega at kayamega.com. And if you've missed any of our previous Kaya conversations, you can get them all on our website at kayamega.com. And be sure to like and comment and follow us on social media so you can catch the next Kaya conversation. Thank you.